All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing something that uh, people have actually requested me to do is to find a big theta uh, for functions that have subtraction in the terms. And when there's subtraction in the terms for our, our functions, it actually is a bit more difficult to find the big theta than it is if every term is an addition. And we'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by that. You'll see in just a second. Uh, in order for a function f of x to be both theta of g of x, the function has to be both O of g of x and omega of g of x. Uh, when it has only the additive terms, it's actually fairly straightforward for polynomials or logarithmic functions. Whenever we're working with, like, say, for example, uh, factorials or some exponentials, it gets a little bit more tricky. But right now, we're only going to fo focus in on these polynomials and logarithmic functions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at both that finding omega of g of x and the big O of g of x. We're going to start out with the omega of g of x because that's actually the one that people have the most problems with and that actually ends up being trickiest. So let's consider this function here, and that's f of n equals 1 quarter n cubed minus 6n squared plus 63n minus 22. And what we're going to do is we're going to determine, find its big theta, or theta, uh, theta of g of n. And where we're going to start here first is we're going to first start out with finding omega of g of n. And that's what we're going to be doing first here. Now. If you remember, just quick recall, we need to find we need to find a c and an n or an n naught such that if n is greater than or equal to n naught, then f of n is going to be in this case it's going to be greater than or equal to c times g of n, All right? And that's our definition for being big omega. So basically what we're looking for is we're looking for a lower bound. We're looking for a lower bound. Uh, when we look at a big O, we're going to be looking for an upper bound. But when we're looking for a big omega, we're going to be looking for a lower bound. And so that's what we're going to be looking at here. All right, so let's first figure out what this G of N is. Now, I've discussed this inside of other videos. Basically what that G of N is going to be for both our big O and our big omega and our big theta is it's going to be the fastest growing term inside of, in this case, this polynomial or is in, inside of this expression. And so that's going to be the, the, the n cubed. So we're going to be looking for got theta of n cubed. That is our hypothesis. In fact, that is, in fact, the, the uh, big theta. And so consequently, we're going to be looking for a c such that we have our f of n is greater than or equal to c times n cubed, whatever that is. Now. In order to do that, what I want to do is I actually want to do a little bit of scratch work, and I'm going to try and actually string together a set of inequalities, and then finally, at the end of that inequality, I want some kind of constant times n cubed, all right? And now it's going to take us a little bit of logic, and hopefully um, this will make some sense for you as I work through this. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to analyze this function, 1 quarter n cubed minus 6n squared plus 63n minus 22. Now, what I want to notice is that I want to make this, this has got to be greater than or equal to something. Now, I can drop off the plus 63n. And the reason why I can drop off the plus 63n is because n has to be greater than or equal to 1. We're dealing with discrete numbers, so consequently it's got to be bigger than 1. And so this is always positive. And so this is going to be greater than or equal to 1 quarter n cubed minus 6n squared minus 22. All right. Think about that for a second. Hopefully it makes sense to you as to why that'd be the case. We're going to do that when we do our work, but for right now, I'm just kind of demonstrating. Now notice the fact that we have a minus 6n cubed and minus 22. I can't actually just do something like this. I can't go, oh, this is going to be then greater than or equal to 1 quarter n cubed. Well, if we know anything about being big O or like the growth of the, of the time complexity of functions, we do know that eventually, Okay, not one quarter n cubed, but there will be some value of n cubed that this will actually end up being kind of true, right? So like 2n cubed or 5n cubed, whatever it is. But this actually is not true. And that's because we have a minus 6n squared and a minus 22. We're subtracting positive values. And so consequently, this is in fact less than or equal to one quarter n cubed. So consequently, that approach isn't going to actually work. That's our problem. The problem is, is that that's not going to work. So, I've got to get rid of this, and I've got to actually think a little bit more deeply about what it is that I'm going to be doing. What we have is we have a very general approach here, and I'm going to talk about as I'm doing some of my scratch work, why that general approach works. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply. I'm going to consider one quarter. Okay, so I'm going to take one quarter and we're going to multiply it by some kind of x, and I want that to equal two. Or excuse me, one quarter. That was one half. One quarter times x and it has to equal two. If I multiply both sides by four, I get x has to equal eight then. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that eight. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to actually multiply by some number x such that I want to get two as my leading coefficient. So I want to get two as my leading coefficient. This, this works every single time. Okay, so this is just what you want to do. Get your two as your leading coefficient. So I multiply both sides by eight. And I end up with, now I got to take one quarter n cubed minus six n squared plus 63n minus 22. Multiply that by eight. And that ends up giving me two n cubed minus 48n squared plus 504n minus 176. Okay, and we're going to start out with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some scratch work in order to generate my inequality, to actually like uh, validate my inequality. So I've got 2n cubed minus 48n squared plus 504n minus 176. So I'm going to take 2n cubed minus 48n squared plus 504n minus 176. And I'm going to note that that's got to be greater than or equal to 2n cubed minus 48n squared minus 176. Once again, since n is greater than or equal to 1, 504n is positive. So consequently, if I take that off, I end up with, I end up with a term that's now strictly less than. So remove the additive terms. Remove the added terms after our, you know, our largest, our leading coefficient, or our leading term. Now, I take n squared, n cubed minus 48 n squared minus 176, and I'm going to end up with n cubed plus n cubed minus 48 n squared minus 176. And I eventually want to make this, okay, I want this to be greater than or equal to n cubed. Once that's the case, then what I, I basically can do is I can make an argument that I've generated something that is, in fact, that has the right inequalities. So when does that happen? Okay, when does that happen? That's going to happen when this term here is, in fact, greater than or equal to zero. All right. So what we need to do is we need to find what is the n. What is that n that's going to make that happen? Okay, where well, we're going to have this inequality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I've got n cubed, and I'll have this is plus n cubed, and I'm going to transform both this, the n squared and the 176n, or 176, into n squared terms. All right? And the reason why we're going to do that is because we want to make sure that this thing here gets bigger than this part here. What is that value when the n cubed, which is being added, is bigger than the things that are being subtracted. Okay, so I got n cubed, and then this is going to become minus 48n squared and minus 176n squared. And in our proof, you're going to see, we're going to actually write out, okay, for the 176n squared, we're going to note that 1 is less than or equal to n for our values, and then that means that n squared, or excuse me, that um, 1 is also going to be less than or equal to n squared, because basically what we're going to get is we're going to get 1 is less than or equal to n squared, n is less than or equal to n squared, okay? Because just by multiplying both sides by a positive n, right? That's positive n, okay? So now what I have is I have this thing right here is n cubed minus, minus 224 n squared, and I need that to be greater than or equal to zero, okay? But this is not so bad because this is just some factoring. So we're gonna pull out an n squared and we're gonna get n minus 224 greater than or equal to zero. Consequently, when is that gonna happen, okay? That's gonna happen when n minus 224 is greater than or equal to zero. And so that means that n has to equal 224. 
or more specifically, that n has to be greater than or equal to 224. So if n is greater than or equal to 224, then n cubed minus 224 n squared is greater than or equal to zero. And in addition to that, we get that n cubed plus n cubed minus 224 n squared will have to be greater than or equal to n cubed, right? Because this piece right here is greater than or equal to zero. All right, and that's what we need. So this turns out that this here, that's gonna end up being our n naught. That's the value uh, that we need in order to, uh, that's the n naught that we're gonna be using in order to uh, do our proof, okay? And basically this has given us the entirety of our proof. So let's kind of review how do we figure those things out. So what we did first is we went in and we said, okay, so you're gonna get two is my leading coefficient. And how do I do that? I multiply whatever this value here is in front of the polynomial by whatever number I need to get two. In this case, I just said one quarter times x equals two, x equals eight. Multiply this side by eight, okay? And then once I multiply by eight, I can go in, I can drop off my added terms, remove the added terms, and then I've just got to do some analysis. For the purposes of our scratch work, you can just go in and actually take these values, right? In this case, like n squared, excuse me, the n squared and the 176, and you're going to make the value, right? In this case, the n squared value. Uh, both terms remaining inside of the polynomial should be n squared we're gonna actually set that greater than or equal to zero and then solve for whatever n should be. By the way, this n over here is gonna simply be zero. Uh, we don't want we don't want to consider that. That doesn't make that doesn't help us at all. So we get n will have to be greater than or equal to 224. And now I have my n naught, okay, which is 224, and we're gonna see in just a second what exactly is going to be our c. Now what I've basically done by finding what that n is is I found, okay, that if n is greater than or equal to 224, then 2n cubed minus 48n squared plus 504n minus 176 is greater than or equal to n cubed. The only problem is this is not f, okay, which is fine. Or this one, actually, this is not f. F right here. What we need to do is we actually need to go in and we need to divide through by that x value, divide through by eight. Okay, so we're gonna multiply by one eighth. We're take one eighth two n cubed minus 48 n squared plus 504 n minus 176, and that's going to be greater than or equal to one eighth n cubed. So that actually ends up giving me my c, and that's how I end up finding my c. Just to make something clear, where did we actually get the 1 8 from? The 1 8 came up from up here. Remember when we found x equals 8, it was the thing that we multiplied by. In order for us to get back to our original equation, we had to go in and divide through by 8. And that's actually why we ended up multiplying both sides by 1 8. All right, so that's where you're going to actually go out and find the value that will end up becoming your c. Now that we have our scratch work, we can go in here and we can, in fact, write this out. Okay, we can write out our values here. What we're gonna say is, so here's our proof. We're gonna let n be greater than or equal to 224, because that's the value that we found. Okay, then, and we're gonna say that our original function, which was one quarter n cubed minus six n squared plus 63 n minus 22, is greater than or equal to, and this will be one quarter n cubed uh, minus six n squared minus 22. Okay, and that will then be greater than or equal to, and we could just write this as one eighth n cubed. We've actually gone through and we've done all of the other scratch work just in case you know, like your professor or the person needs to see your scratch work, but that's essentially where we ended up getting our n equals two, uh, 224 from and our one eighth n cubed. Thus, one quarter n cubed minus six n squared plus 63 n minus 22 is greater than or equal to one eighth n cubed. And that means that f of n is 
omega of n cubed. Okay, and that's the hard part for us actually being able to pick, figure out big theta for these ones where they have subtraction of terms. Now we've got to go through and prove big O, but what that means for us is, is that we want to, we want to, if n is greater than or equal to n naught, okay, then f of n is less than or equal to, and so we're looking for an upper bound, c times g of n. And this actually makes things a lot easier because what we've done now is we've actually gone in and we've switched the signs, okay? So we're going to just take a look. We're going to do a little bit of scratch work here, and then we're going to get 1 quarter n cubed minus 6n squared plus 63n minus 22. And in this case, since we want the less than or equal to, all right, we can actually pull off the minus 6n squareds. So this is going to be less than or equal to, or and the minus 22, 1 quarter n cubed plus 63n. Okay, because we're subtracting out now numbers that are positive. So what we're going to get is we're actually going to get like, we got it, less than or equal to. Now, just like we've done before in easier versions of finding the big O, what we're going to see is, is that we just need to change this n to an n, square, n cubed. And that's because n is going to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so n squared is greater than or equal to n, and n cubed is greater than or equal to n squared. So what we've got is we've got this thing here is actually less than or equal to 1 quarter n cubed plus 63 n cubed. And this is actually, that's 63 and 1 quarter n cubed, so let's actually do a little fraction. And that gives me 253 over 4 n cubed. Notice I never had to do anything with n. n continues to just be 1 in this case, and my c is 253 over 4 n cubed. Should look an awful lot like those stuff that we've done before with big O. So the big O part is a lot easier than the big omega. Now let's go through and write the proof. So if n is greater than or equal to 1, because that's the n that we've got here, we didn't have to change it, then we get that 1 quarter n cubed minus 6n squared plus 63n minus 22 is less than or equal to 1 quarter n cubed plus 63n, which is less than or equal to 1 quarter n cubed plus 63n cubed, which equals 253 over 4n cubed. Thus, f of n is O of n cubed. We've gone through and we've shown it. Here's our C, and here is our N naught. So now, just in conclusion, what we have is we have, we've shown that this function F of N is big omega of N cubed and big O of N cubed, all right? So this is our final conclusion. So since F of N is O of N cubed and F of N is omega of N cubed, then f of n is big theta of n cubed. Whenever we're dealing with finding the worst case time, not just finding the worst case time complexity, but proving the big O or the big omega or the big theta for uh, functions that have the subtraction of terms that are positive, subtraction of positive terms, what we need to do is we need a different method for actually going through and finding our n naught and our, our c. And this method actually works out pretty well. So I hope this has helped. This completes the, the, the lesson for this. Uh, if you need to, go back to the beginning, take a look at uh, the proof method, and, uh, you know, basically that process should work every single time for these kind of problems. This is Dr. George Sweeney, and I want to thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful and you liked it, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you want more of these videos and you want to get my updates, please click subscribe. If you have any questions or you just want to say how much you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave some comments. I do read and respond to the comments.